now let <clears throat> let me explain the code the first thing in the code of the peer process file is making object of itself the second thing is reading the common file and the peer config file and then setting the appropriate variables as seen here also if the current peer has the file the bit field will be set accordingly then the third thing is starting a log writer after all of this is said and done then uh, the peer process checks if it has the file then if it has the file it is accepted as a server a server in the sense which does not require to download a file but only to send the file to other peers if it does not has the file then it is listed as a, a server and also a client and these both are run as threads now let's see how the client functions in the client the first thing which is done is a socket is made as per its ip and port uh, host name and port then a handshake object is made the handshake object is in this fashion the handshake consists of a string called headers a zero bit and its peer id after doing that it is sent to all those peers which are already running in the network before this current peer then when a handshake is sent the handshake is also received by the so uh, by the peer after receiving the handshake it is checked for its header validity and if the header is correct then it sends it receives the bit field from the uh, server peer which already has the file and after receiving it sets the bit field in the array which corresponds to the peer after doing that it sends its bit field to the peer in the same way as this is useful to get and request the pieces we'll see further then it also sets complete file if the uh, if the peer which has or uh, which is connected currently if it has the complete file or not or what pieces does it have then after doing this a log is made of connection request after making the connection request a certain objects and their process are start object to send a message to receive or uh, to receive a message and then to send and request or download pieces now let's see how does the server work in the server as we know it will always be on a listening mode which will always accept of certain connections from other peers also when it receives a connection it will receive a handshake message and then it will send its handshake message to that uh, peer after doing that it will check for its header and everything it will extract its header and if it it will check if the header is valid or not after doing that it will do all those same things it will send its bit field receive the bit field check if it has the complete file or certain amount of process a uh, certain amount of pieces and then make a log entry and start a certain objects now let's see how does a send message work in the send message it's a simple thing of writing everything to the output stream in a synchronized fashion which means if we take into consideration a peer one a peer a then every message from peer a will be in synchronization which means after writing message one then on later write message two message three and in the same way the messages will be forwarded 
Now let's see how does the receive message work. As we know, the receive message, where is it? The receive message will constantly be on looking for the input stream and then it will check what is the message in the input stream. Yeah. Also, it checks as it starts, it's check for the type of message, whether it is choke appear, unchoke appear, interested message, not interested message, and so on. This is for a have message have message the type six is for which piece is requested and etc all the other things which it can do now let's see how does the request piece work if it does not have all the pieces if a peer does not have all the pieces it will iterate through its uh, peer neighbor peer list and see and try to unchoke them which have the pieces after doing that it is if it has now there can be two conditions the peer has the complete file or it does not have a complete file if it has a complete file it will merely say that i have a complete file i log it down merge the complete file and then be only a server and not a client then if it receives an interested message from a certain peer which has a complete file but it does not have a com if this peer does not have a complete file it will check for all the interested message which it has received from other peers and then try to request a piece from them in a synchronized fashion if that server is not interested then it will try to check with other servers other peers etc now as we know though the network should be on running till all the peer have the file so this function check if every peer in the uh, in the network has a file if anyone does not has a file then it is set to false and is broken out of the loop now let's see how are we writing a log so in the log we are setting the string file name to the file name which is given to us then if there is a tcp connection which means if there is a handshake the log is made that peer so my peer has made a connection to certain peer uh, this is for a request if the request if the handshake is received then it shows that a connection is made it is definitely connected then this is for have message a choked unchoked receive a uh, interested message not interested message and so many things like download a piece and everything when it uh, the interesting thing here is when it downloads a piece the peer says how many pieces does it have? Hi, in this video, I will be talking about passing the common.cfg and the peer info.cfg files. Let us start with the common.cfg. As we can see, the common.cfg contains these six important pieces of data that are needed for the peer to peer infrastructure to function. These are the number of preferred neighbors, which are two, the unchoking interval, which is five seconds the optimistic unchoking interval which is 10 seconds the file name the file size and the piece size the piece size denotes the size of the pieces that the file is broken down into the common config parser.java as the name suggests is used to pass the common.cfg here the six different variables are declared to store the information that we saw in the common.cfg file this try block passes each of the data from common.cfg and stores in the variables that were declared above. The two exceptions which are handled are the file not found and the input output exception. Moving on to peerinfo.cfg, we have nine different peers that will be taking part in the peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure. The peerinfo parser passes this important information from the peerinfo.cfg. 
This includes the peer ID, which is the peer ID of the neighbor, my peer ID, which is the peer ID of the node itself, the peer IP port and has complete file. The read file passes each line individually and splits it into different pieces of information. This information is stored in the variables which are declared above. The has complete file checks whether the, the file is available or not and stores a Boolean value of either true or false. In the get all peer ID, the peer IDs are returned as an array list of integers. While in get peer info, the array list of strings is returned for each of the peers. The functionality of these two files will be explained in the video later. Now we can see the execution of a file sharing P2P application. And we are using the CSC systems remotely using Thunder, Storm, and Rain. Now we'll just verify the configuration files once before. So here we can see all the configurations of peers, and we can notice that sixth and first peers already have the file. Again, common config. We'll verify the common configuration, and the file name that we are going to share is the file dot dat. Here we have the choking and unchoking intervals. Over here we can see the uh, folders for peers one and six uh, exist because they already have the file. Uh, as we can see here, the file exists in peer peer one zero zero one. And oh, okay. And similarly in peer one zero zero six. So we'll now execute application. We'll have to go a directory above this. So now the first peer which has the file is waiting for someone to make a request to it. And as you can see, as soon as a peer joins the network, a uh, handshake is completed between them and file sharing begins. So as instantaneously as soon as peers join the network, they are making requests to all the peers that are previously active. As you can see, peer 6, once it's just 6 already had a file, so it waited for peer 7 to make a request to it. And likewise up to peer 1009. So these are the actions, uh, these are the events occurring and we'll look at them through logs later on. Well, up here finished, completed downloader file and now it is waiting and uh, for uh, everyone to, is uh, communicating with the others to share its file and waiting for the termination of all peers. So the peers actually wait after co completing the uh, download so that they could service other peers that are still left in the network. And every peers concurrently stop execution once everyone has a file, which we will verify here. And over here we can see that all have in fact stopped their functioning once the file is received. So now we'll try to investigate the log files and see what actions did take place to this execution. So here we are verifying that uh, unlike the previous L ls operation now we have folders for each peer and logs accordingly so we can check so we can know we know that the logs have been created and we can check it and verify what actions did take place during the operation so the first are the handshake connections to the previous peers 
so 1004 attempts hand check with 1 2 and 3 pairs and chokes unchokes the two pairs to two preferred neighbors then it has been sending have not interested messages subsequently yeah we can see it downloading the pieces so we have piece number 29 from 1002 similarly 161 so they have been downloaded asynchronously and not sequentially because based on the availability and also they are being downloaded from different peers if we can notice that further peer 3 so we can see that it has been downloading from two different peers Further, we'll try to identify uh, an event of optimistic unchoking. So we'll search for the same. We have an unchoked event here, which happened based on the interval. So it should be five seconds after every five seconds. And from the yeah, we have an optimistic unchoked. Wait, unchoked neighbor 1008. This is picked up randomly from the pool of peers that are active at the time, and the interval is 15 seconds for this. So we see that the handshake has already been done from peer 8, so it already knows it is active at the time, which is how it optimistically unchokes it. And then we look at the have messages and the communication and peer 1004 also has choked has been choked by peer 1003 which is again data mined by the preferred neighbors other list we'll check the file that uh, the peer that already had the file and check the logs for it so 001 and 006 both had the file but since 1004 communicated with 1001 so it would be better to show the handshake between them so this is the first peer that has been connected with it so 1002 did the handshake and sent the interested message and now since they have been communicating um, and sharing file sharing throughout the time and as soon as peer 1003 is activated it again handshakes and gets connected to 1001. So, and then pair 1004 handshakes and communicates to 1002 because now 1001 is servicing 1002 and 3, so they have pieces of the file. And as you can see, uh, server notes the pieces that it has been communicated. 